So did anyone get to watch any of the Masters a couple weeks back? Good, glad to see a couple hands. Well, I know I did, and I was really excited to see that Bubba Watson won. I was rooting for him all weekend. But aside from being happy that Bubba won the Masters, I was really glad to see several commercials promoting the first tee. The first tee is a very near and dear program to my heart because I was one to participate when I was younger. And it's also the reason why I'm here to talk to you today. All in all, my goal is for you all to leave here wanting to get involved with the first tee in some way, whether it be donating through the website or volunteering at a local chapter. First, I want to talk about some of the background information on the first tee, and then I'll talk about some of their goals, and then I'll wrap it up with how the first tee works to achieve those goals. For those of you who didn't get to watch any of the Masters or didn't catch any of the first tee commercials, the first tee is a nonprofit, nonprofit junior golf organization that works to develop life skills among kids and teens across America through the game of golf. Currently, the first tee has about 9 million participants and is active in all 50 states. So, in order to keep the program growing and well recognized across America, it's really important for people like you guys to get involved. One of the main reasons why the first tee reaches out to young people is due to the fact that one in four students drop out of public high school. The first tee strives to create a quality youth program that, is, that can be part of the solution to the challenges that youth face today. Chapters across the country work to convey the significance of education and life skills in order to prepare youth for success in high school and hopefully eventually college. Now, for those who are a little bit better with data in the process of making decisions like I am, the Youth Development Research Program found that 73% of the first T's participants reported high confidence in their ability to do well academically. The way that the first T promotes the importance of academics and wholesome attitudes is by making golf more than just a sport through nine core values. And those values include honesty, integrity, sportsmanship, respect, confidence, responsibility, perseverance, courtesy, and judgment. An example of encouraging respect and responsibility through golf includes keeping the golf courses clean and the practice areas well maintained, and really teaching the participants to keep, it, keep them in better shape than the way they found them. But another way that the first tee promotes the growth of character among kids and teens across America is through endless once-in-a-lifetime opportunities. During my senior year of high school, I was given the opportunity by the first tee to play on the golf channel in the golf channel invitational in St. Augustine, Florida. And playing on national television was one of the scariest experiences of my life. I mean, I'm not Bubba Watson walking up to the tee with a hot paint dryer. So, but that experience is what taught me to be confident in myself and know that my best effort is enough. Well, I hope I've given you all some good insight on why the first tee is an important program to get involved with. And I hope you will all join me in making golf more than just a sport.
anybody, does anybody have anything? Oh, one thing. Your gestures, facial expressions were good. Your eye contact was good. One thing, you sort of lost your smile about halfway through. Now, then you got it back. But just remember, keep smiling. Keep smiling. And I, I think you were just wanting to be sure you were following your organization. The only gesture that I would watch out for is you were a little intense with your hands. Did you notice that? I wouldn't have thought that you had any nerves at all but for the fact that it seemed like at times you were clenching your hands. And one other person, I don't know if it was this class, did that. But that's, that's just a, you can easily put your hands down. Yes? And also watch for, like, crossing your feet. Because I oh, noticed like yeah, that, and that's, like, like a little bit of body language. It means, like, you don't want to be there. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, that's a good point. I didn't notice that. Of course, I couldn't see it, really, but I didn't notice that. Well, but otherwise, I thought you did, oh, 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 did an excellent job. Does anybody have any, any comments, other, other comments for Chelsea? Good. Awesome. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Who's next? Who's next? One more. All right. Jimmy. Who's your audience? Oh, you want students. Okay. Let me go pick up Chelsea. Chelsea. She? What are your presentations, are there? What? And then I'm going. Thank you. in search of an open fast food restaurant. Many of you? All right, well, my name is Jimmy Butzler, and I have run into many of these situations during my time at Elon. <laughs> uh, what I'm proposing today is that Elon should open a fast food delivery service available for all students on campus. Um, in a quickly expanding population of Elon students of over 5,000, there needs to be more dining options available for students 24 hours a day. I am proposing an on-campus fast food delivery service based out of the main center of campus, the Mosley Center, that runs 24 hours a day and serves the fast food that is already there, uh, Topio's, uh, Freshies, and Biscuit Milk, of course. Um, this service would deliver to anyone within a one and a half mile radius of the campus. Uh, that way it's included for mainly students. Um, and it's, this uh, service would be <coughs> specifically to Elon students. Uh, this would be beneficial for the Elon community. Um, it would allow for more on-campus jobs. Um, there's quite a lack of on-campus jobs uh, for the or the need. Uh, uh, basically, there are very limited jobs for students on campus, and I'm sure we could always use some more. Um, this would also be profitable for Elon, since there are no competing delivery services in the area. Um, also, Aramark makes uh, plenty of money off of uh, food services, and their main goal is just to cut even. And with a pro uh, revenue of over $9 billion a year, I doubt that they will see any serious uh, impact from this delivery service. Um, additionally, it would also add to the well-being of Elon students, since we all get hungry late at night and we do not have a delivery service. And in conclusion, I would just like to say that everyone should reach out to the Elon administration and uh, voice their expression for a delivery service. Thank you. Thank you. 